Recently, I did a video about how to shoot in low light with the brand new GoPro Hero 11 Black. Now, I do know that the GoPro is not optimal for low light shooting, and if you can, you definitely wanna opt for a bigger camera, but sometimes all you've got is a GoPro. So I really wanted to see if you could shoot in low light with it, and if so, what settings were best. And my conclusions were actually that the Hero 11 is among the better recent GoPros for shooting in low light. So if you wanna see that video, I'll have it linked below. But in this video, I'm gonna answer a question that people had in the previous video, which is, did I have HyperSmooth on and does HyperSmooth affect the image quality when shooting in low light? So we're gonna test that out tonight. And we are also going to compare it to the footage that comes out of a recent flagship phone. This is Martin's Samsung Galaxy S22. So we're gonna stack them up against each other and see how they fare. But before I get started, I do wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Hohem. They have graciously provided us with a quite a few gimbals that we're gonna use in our testing. So we've got the Hohem iSteady Pro 4, which I have talked about in a previous video. And as far as smartphone gimbals, we actually have two to try out tonight. We have this Hohem iSteady gimbal, which is a three axis gimbal for smartphones. And then we have Hohem's newer gimbal, which is the Hohem iSteady Q. So this is actually a pretty cool gimbal because number one, it's very affordable. It's only 36 US dollars, which is pretty incredible for a smartphone gimbal. I don't know of one that is even close to that price, but besides being a gimbal, it is also a mini tripod and it's an extendable selfie stick. And when connected to the app, you can also unlock other modes such as the clone me and inception modes, and you can enable 360 degree tracking. So let's gather our mobile devices and all of these gimbals and test them out and see how they perform. I had to start the music right as I was doing the sound test. Okay, so now that I'm in a warmer place, let's analyze the footage that I just shot, starting with the GoPro Hero 11 Black. Now looking at this footage, which was shot on the Hohem iSteady Pro gimbal with HyperSmooth off, I can undoubtedly say that it made a huge impact on the video stabilization. By the way, you can't even shoot in linear with horizon leveling when HyperSmooth is off, which I didn't even know. Now this footage is shot with HyperSmooth on using the linear with horizon leveling digital lens. And boy, did I miss that horizon leveling feature. Next, we have some footage shot with HyperSmooth Boost, which is the second best level of built-in stabilization. And finally, this is footage shot with Auto Boost, which is brand new on the GoPro Hero 11. Now, personally, I think that the footage shot with stabilization turned off looks the worst, even if you're using a gimbal. Now, would the results turn out better if I used a bigger, more hefty gimbal like the ones I have behind me? Well, yeah, it probably would do a better job of stabilizing the camera, but that's something that I can test in another video, so comment below if you want to see that test. But those gimbals are bigger, heavier, and cost more money. So if you want a dedicated gimbal that is specially made for GoPros, then you don't have many choices other than the two that I mentioned earlier, including this one right here. Now, personally, I don't see a dramatic difference between shooting with HyperSmooth on, Boost, or Auto Boost. But because Auto Boost dynamically crops in and oftentimes results in a slightly wider image, I personally would choose to shoot with Auto Boost. And while Auto Boost is really good at stabilizing, it does not work well in low lighting without a gimbal. So I think you definitely still need to use it with a gimbal if you don't have enough lighting. Now on to the phone footage. So I started off with a base test of walking with the Samsung Galaxy S22 back facing camera. Handheld, no gimbal, but with super steady built-in stabilization turned on. And you know, the stabilization is not perfect, but it's not bad either, especially considering that I was just holding the phone with one hand. Next, I did a vlogging test with the front-facing camera, which does not have super steady stabilization. And the footage looks a lot worse, super jittery. So then I added the Hohem iSteady Q one axis gimbal. And while it does provide some stabilization when I'm walking, you can still see a tipsy kind of boat-like effect where the image kind of looks like it's rocking back and forth. And that's really because of this small low cost gimbal. It's only providing one axis of stabilization, which is optimal for really light movements like walking ultra slowly as I was doing in these front facing camera tests. 
If you plan to walk or make more vigorous movements, then you really want to use a 3-axis gimbal to give you the best stabilization. Like, wow, that is rock steady stabilization just by changing up the gimbal. So what's the value of getting a 1-axis gimbal like the iSteady Q instead of a 3-axis gimbal? Well, a couple reasons, and the first is price. The iSteady Q is a lot cheaper at $39.99 versus just over $100 for the iSteady V2 3-axis gimbal. And the second reason is not every vlog walks and films at the same time. There are some vloggers that prefer to sit or stand statically and perhaps just want to take occasional selfies or take advantage of that 360 tracking feature. And in that case, the iSteady Q would be a perfect vlogging accessory. But now let's talk about the image quality difference between the GoPro and a smartphone when shooting in low lighting. And this part really surprised me, like a lot. Now we have said on this channel many times that when you're in low lighting, it's optimal to not use a GoPro and to use your phone instead because that typically results in better image quality. And well, after this round of testing with the Samsung's latest smartphone, I thought the video quality was surprisingly subpar. Even though the lighting is balanced, the details are really muddled. The GoPro actually looks way better in low lighting, which is something I never thought it would say. Now it is worth noting that the Samsung Galaxy S22 that I was shooting with is not the top of the line. There's actually a version above it called the Ultra, and that's supposed to have better image quality. And now I'm really wondering how much better it would perform in low light. Anyone wanna loan us their phone to test?